Hi and welcome to my channel. I'm sitting here with a, a standard receiver from FreeSky. This is an 8-channel receiver uh, which is using uh, PWM to communicate uh, with the servo. Um, so uh, the point of this video is just to show how the signal looks like and to see the differences between uh, different kinds of communication ways or methods. So let me move let me just move the camera to the screen so we can take a closer look. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, PPM uh, signal. Here I have a 8-channel receiver. It's a standard receiver. It doesn't support uh, uh, PPM. It's a PWM. So as the previous receivers, it's pretty much the same. But what I have done is uh, connected all the channels, as you can see, to this little board here. And this is a, a PPM encoder. So what basically this does is take all the PWM signals from the receiver into uh, the uh, the board and serialize them in into one cable so that I can ho uh, use the one cable instead of all eight into my flight controller. So let's take a look and see how this signal looks like. Yeah, so here you can see the this is the PPM uh, signal. It's almost the same as the PWM. Uh, but as previous with PWM I only had one spike in here I have all eight spikes in a row in serial so whenever I move um, uh, the stick on my radio you can see that the the width of the pulse is changing so and whatever uh, channel I uh, uh, move on the radio you can see different spikes are moving so uh, again I'm not an expert if we have uh, an expert looking at this probably uh, um, the person can correct me uh, but as far as I understand this is the difference so it's still PWM but in series So uh, that's it, um, and this is why uh, you have to you have to take care of you have to uh, take that into account when you buy a, a flight controller or a receiver, whether it's only PWM or if it's PPM, or the next one we're going to take a look at is the the uh, the Espas. Let's do that now. Yeah, so what you see here is the uh, FreeSky X4R uh, S-Bus version. I have connected it up and now this is just playing, connected up plain and I'm gonna tell you a little bit later what I mean by that. So uh, this is the S-Bus, so let's take a look at the screen and see how it looks like now. Yeah, so this is how it looks like. It's quite different. Uh, we have a, a lot of, well, spikes. I call them spikes, and I do know that that's not the proper name. Anyway, um, and when I move the, uh, the throttle or the um, channels on my radio, you can see things moving and see the left part, only the left part is moving and the, the right part is not moving. The reason for that, I do not know. Hope maybe someone who does knows and can tell us about it. So if we, if we zoom in uh, a little bit closer, so you can see that things are happening. In the previous, um, uh, um, in the PPM and then the um, PWM signals, it was you know it was clean. It was easy to understand. You can see the width of the pulse was just 
uh, moving and it's easy. This is Aspas, so and it's digital. So it's not the same. It, you, it's not even close. So we can see things are moving, but it's it's not we, we are not able to see what it means. And there are probably some logic in it, but you have to decode it to be able to know what the what these means. Uh, and with this uh, uh, oscilloscope, I can't decode it. <clears throat> with a logic analyzer, maybe I could. Um, I don't know if I want to go into that. Um, and as I said, this is the plain uh, uh, version, SBUS signal. Uh, and the it's in, as, long, as far as I know, it's uh, compared to the Futaba SBUS, it's inverted. Um, I'm not quite sure if uh, I can just uh, connect to the to the signal before it's inverted. It is possible on this uh, receiver. Um, there you can find a lot of uh, uh, talks about it on RC groups, um, for instance. But we can try to uh, to hook up to the inverted signal. It's not going to make any difference because this is, as I said, this is the di digital. You have to decode it to see the difference. But we can try anyway. So hold on for a second. Yes. So what you see here is uh, the inverted signal, and um, as you can see, it doesn't make any sense at all. We do see movement, and it does mean something, but you have to decode it. Uh, to be able to to um, to understand what it means. Uh, to what I can see, there's a lot of noise. I'm not quite sure, but all these spikes that you see on top, yeah, I, as far as I know, at, that's noise. And I don't know if that's the, the reason I was not able to get this to work, but um, according to, to, uh, to links that I found on articles on RC groups, you are supposed to be able to, to use the, uh, the inverted SBUS on the, um, the NASA, NASA 32 flight controller, but I was not able to get it to work, so I gave it up and I put a, a PPM um, receiver instead. Anyway, um, that was all I had. Um, uh, and for those newbies out there, um, it's a lot to learn uh, and it's for me I find it very interesting uh, but now you can know why why there are differences and why you need to to take all of this into account when you buy uh, uh, receivers and flight controllers and and all that so it's PWM PPM and SPS there are also something called CPPM but um, I, I'm not able to see the difference from PPM and CPPM Maybe uh, someone out there can tell us the difference. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.